All right, everyone, this video might be the most important one. I mean, not in all videos in ever existence, but at least out of mine. This is the language that we're going to use for anatomy physiology. I think if you're starting to approach anatomy physiology class, the first thing you wanna do mentally is to kind of shift into understanding that it's a foreign language course. It's a lot of Latin and a lot of Greek. So you're going to want to try to use the terminology throughout your daily life, just like as if you were learning a regular foreign language. How do these things actually work in conversation? And so this video, we're gonna focus on some of the terminology for describing directions, um, because that's exactly how things are going to be described throughout the rest of um, your studies in anatomy phys. So let's talk about first how these terms will work. They're always gonna be in comparison. So you never just say something is this, you say it's something is this compared to something else? So for example, let's look at superior versus inferior. So we're gonna just do some really bad art here for a second. So here's our little character. I could have just used my own face. I don't really know why I'm drawing one, but I'm going to. All right, so here's our little character. Superior would be up towards the top. Inferior would be towards the bottom. This terminology here, superior and inferior, works for head, neck, torso, so trunk, when you're describing something, you're doing it in comparison. So again, I don't really know why I drew it because I'm just using mine. So if I say my nose is superior to my mouth, I'm basically just saying my nose is above my mouth. So superior means above. Inferior means below. So think about how we use these words in common terminology. If somebody says that they're so superior, they're saying that they're above you or they think that you're inferior, you're below them. So you're using it as a comparison. So going back to the mouth being inferior to the nose, I could also say the mouth is superior to the chin. Your term can change based on what your reference is. So superior and inferior, you're naming your reference point and it's up and down, head, trunk. That's gonna be different than if you're doing stuff that's up and down, but more on a limb. These are actually the next ones that I'm gonna show you are the more complex ones, I think, out of all the terminology. And it has to do with how close is it to the attachment. When you're looking on limbs, I could say the elbow is above the wrist, but if I move, right? I, well, no, it's below the wrist. And granted, whenever you're using any of these terms, you're always supposed to refer back to anatomical position. So that's feet forward, palms forward, head up and straight. So that's anatomical position. That's always what you're referring back to. But it's almost just easier if you always, if for the limbs, if you're always referring to, well, how close is it to its attachment point where it goes into the trunk? So if we're using proximal and distal, you're talking about how it compares to its attachment point. So proximal meaning it's closer to the attachment point, distal further away, I think distant. So proximal, I think near attachment, and then distal, further from attachment. So if you're looking at proximal versus distal, if you're looking at the arm here, the elbow would be proximal to the wrist. It's closer to the attachment point than the wrist is. So if we're looking at the term proximal, I also think approximate or near to, distal, distant. Now, if I take the wrist and I compare it to the fingers, well, now the wrist is going to be proximal. It's closer to attachment than the fingers are. So the wrist would be proximal and the fingers would be distal. So these are specifically going to be for the limbs. All right, now let's talk if we're working in and out. So towards the center, if we're looking down the midline, that would be medial. So this is going to be towards the middle. And then over this direction would be lateral. And so I always kind of refer to that, like when I think about being an athlete, they would say run laterals. You're running side to side. So lateral, you're going towards the sides, medial towards the midline. Another set of terms that we can use um, would be front to back. So I'm gonna, uh, again, I don't know why I'm, I'm gonna turn me. So front towards the front, anterior, towards the back, posterior. Another term that you could use for these, so there are alternative names. So anterior towards the front, can also be called ventral. Those are interchangeable terms. Posterior, so that's the back, is also referred to as our dorsal side. So these are gonna be the towards the back terms. So if you're looking at, okay, why am I gonna draw it? So there's a nose and a mouth maybe. 
mm, bad art, but hair, maybe. So anterior, posterior. Anterior towards the front, posterior towards the back. When you're looking at this term ventral, you don't use it as much, but the trick I use is I think the vents are in the front of my car. And then when you're looking at this term dorsal, the dorsal fin on a shark, the one that, you know, like in Jaws when you hear the dun dun, that's a called a dorsal fin. So you're looking towards the back there. Um, another alternative term we should probably talk about here when we look at superior and inferior going up and down is cranial versus caudal. Sometimes you might see cranial used for superior, meaning towards the cranium, towards the head. Caudal actually means tail. So if you're talking about something that means caudal, you're talking about going down, you're talking about towards the tail. Okay, so we have medial lateral in and out, superior, inferior, up and down, proximal distal up and down on limbs, and then we have um, anterior and posterior for front to back. Hopefully that kind of helps with some major um, ori orientation terminology. Um, another one to also make sure you're comfortable with is if you're describing things that are on the same side of the body versus opposite sides of the body. And it's gonna be ipsilateral and contralateral. Contralateral, like I think contradictory, they're gonna be opposites. Ipsy, ipsilateral means same, so it'd be same side. So if I were to look at this eye versus this ear, these are gonna be ipsilateral, well, same side. But if I look at this eye compared to this ear, they're contralateral, they're on opposite sides. All right, everyone, well, hopefully getting a sense of some of those directional terminology terms now will really help you feel comfortable as you start to understand and dive into some of the language that your textbooks will be using. Thanks for watching.